Hi, firstly, I would like to thank Mogus for making it possible for me to speak here. Um, I would like to share my story with you today. Uh, so quite soon after my birth in Ohio, the obstetrician who delivered me asked my mother if she'd like for my nails to be filed down before I left the hospital. She answered, yes, of course, not wanting me to injure myself by scratching my face. Then the obstetrician asked her if he should circumcise me as well. And to this, she also gave her consent because she thought that circumcision would reduce the risk of cancer. And she also believed that it was simply the appropriate form of trimming for the penis. So I was whisked off to an operating room where my mother would not be able to hear my screams of agony. Then I was strapped to a board and the most sensitive part of my penis was forcibly torn off the glands to which it had still been attached, crushed in a clamp and amputated, all despite my furious protest. Then they carefully filed down my nails because, you know, God forbid I should injure myself. The undoubtedly horrifying and traumatizing experience of my circumcision faded from my conscious memory, and so after a few years, I didn't question my appearance. To my mind, the prominent circumcision scar was simply a normal variation in pigmentation. Then when I was six years old, my mother and I decided to convert to Judaism, the religion of my father. It took five years to prepare to get an orthodox conversion, and by the time I was 11, I could hardly contain my excitement to enter into the covenant with God. Since I already lacked a foreskin, all that was required for me in terms of genital ma manipulation was a ritual called Hatafat Dambrit, in which a drop of blood is ritually drawn from the circumcision scar. And um, thinking this a small price to pay to join the chosen people, I consented without hesitation. I didn't think about my circumcision status again for the next 10 years. Then, 10 years later, at a party in Berlin at the Freies Museum, I uh, was randomly accosted by a woman who asked me what my view on circumcision was and whether I thought it should be allowed in Germany. Of course, this was only a few weeks after the decision by a district judge here that um, circumcision constitutes criminal bodily injury. Um, so this debate was going on here and she, she wanted my opinion as an American and as a Jew and I told her, of course it should be allowed. Um, there's, a, there's a right to the free exercise of religion in Germany. And she wasn't very happy with this response. Uh, she told me it's really a matter of genital autonomy and of the right to sexual determination of the child. And I didn't know what to say to that, so I didn't say anything. Uh, but though the conversation with this woman ended abruptly, the conversation in my mind did not. And for the next several weeks, I researched this topic, um, the nearly obsessive energy. And I quickly discovered that this is what I was going to write my honors thesis on. The most significant discovery for me personally in this journey of educating myself has been that the tissue that was removed from my body is not an insignificant and purposeless appendage, but an essential part of the penis with significant sexual and tactile functions and capacities. After realizing what was taken from me before I had the power to resist, I have resolved to do everything in my power to prevent it from being taken from as many others as I can. In the United States, the most effective method to prevent this human rights abuse has been to educate people on its true nature, including the fact that it is a ritual, not a valid medical procedure. Unfortunately, some of the most significant hindrances to this process have come from the American medical establishment. For example, despite stopping short of recommending circumcision, the American Academy of Pediatrics asserts that the benefits of circumcision are sufficient to justify access to this procedure for families choosing it and to warrant third-party payment. The, draft, the new draft guidelines from the CDC advise that parents be counseled on the ostensible health benefits of this procedure. In the Mayo Clinic, using the most nauseating weasel words, claims that circumcision is not, quote, generally thought to enhance or detract from sexual pleasure for men or their partners. With such inf misinformation coming from the top, and in light of the fact that many American medical practitioners, both male and female, only have experience with circumcised penises, it's hardly a surprise that they often do not provide complete information to parents. 
Some promote circumcision because they profit from it. Others are simply well, mis misinformed themselves, and they pass this misinformation on to parents both explicitly and implicitly. When a doctor asks a guardian whether they want for their baby boy to be circumcised, the question itself is a recommendation. In fact, even humoring a parent's unsolicited request is an endorsement. Not only should the medical establishment not be endorsing genital mutilation, but they, as its strongest propagators over the past two centuries, have a moral duty to actively and honestly educate the public. If the medical community would discharge this duty, there can be no doubt that circumcision would largely fall out of favor in my country as it has in every other country in the Anglophone world. Now I'm keenly aware that much of the hesitancy to speak frankly about circumcision comes from the, a fear on the part of members of the medical community as well as others that they will be accused of anti-Semitism if they speak the truth. As a Jewish intactivist, I can think of few accusations that are more slanderous and offensive. The call for equal, thoroughgoing basic rights for every person is the antithesis of bigotry. Bigoted is the suggestion that Jewish and Muslim children should be denied their most fundamental rights. I call on the American medical community to take an active role in eradicating the epidemic of sexual abuse that they have played a primary role in causing by educating people with frank and complete information on the structure and functions of the foreskin rather than spreading the apologetic nonsense that they have been in order to line their own pockets and to appease the religious establishment. I call on hospitals to prohibit on their premises all non-therapeutic, non-consensual surgical operations. And finally, I call on rabbis and Muslim leaders to have enough respect for their members of their communities to allow them to make informed decisions rather than attempting to shut down the discussion by equating speech against circumcision with hate speech. Thank you.